We have accepted the challenge to build the entire Earth in Minecraft, something that would have seemed impossible thousands of years ago. Well, actually, ancient people probably would have gotten on their knees to worship you if you showed them a slinky, so it's not really that impressive. Could a slinky make it all the way down the steps of the Great Pyramids? We'll explore that question in depth for next video. But we're building the Earth in Minecraft. 196.9 million square miles of this mass with such a gravitational force that we're all being pulled down to it like a prison we cannot escape. Considering nothing but beautiful sights and cancer-causing solar radiation awaits us out there, I guess I'm thankful for the gravity, whatever. Otherwise all the buildings would float away, and that would be bad. But we're building the Earth in Minecraft. And with this obligation, there's certain challenges that come with the endeavor. Some may call them impossibilities, I call them opportunities. But the greatest opportunity and joy in our project is going anywhere in the world, finding your favorite place, or something that captures your imagination and saying, I'm gonna build that in Minecraft. How that would typically go is that you would have satellite imagery, street view, and 3D models representing the buildings to help you visually replicate it in your game. In the last video, we explored Aki's 5,000 buildings in a Buenos Aires slum called Barrio Mugica. As incredible as this accomplishment is, it's actually more incredible because of the lack of resources he had to work with. He had 3D models to the area, but they were unusable. Take a look at it. Based on all the measurements we make of buildings that depend on the accuracy of 3D models, it makes the accomplishment of building this place a mind-boggling achievement. It's the same case with when we built North Korea. North Korea is so secretive and locked down, there's no Google Street View, and the entire country has less than 20 3D building models for individual buildings most of them being right here in Pyongyang Square. This huge panorama shot absolutely saved us in terms of revealing what's actually there. Without it, we would have been screwed. Antarctica was a similar situation. They just couldn't get the Google streetcars out there, man. So much of us building Antarctica when we were working on it at the time was looking at a box from a single satellite image and counting the individual pixels to determine some idea of what the height was. Antarctica doesn't have a single 3D model. So you don't live in Antarctica, probably. But what if you want to build where you live, but the 3D is too low quality? What if you don't have 3D at all? Well, to be frank, it's gonna be so difficult to build the area, being able to build en masse will be a near impossible task. And 3D models are absent, and that's the impending reality that's holding us back. 3D models are absent in large swaths of the world, including most third world countries and many other places. So we are screwed, but not forever. Let me explain. If we started this project in 2009 when Minecraft first came out, it would have been pretty much impossible and it would have seemed like there's no cavalry on the horizon. That's because Google Street View had came out a few years before. I was in school at the time. Everyone was freaking out and blocking their driveways and shit. But Google had almost no usable 3D. The first method to create 3D were companies manually drawing 3D models of buildings using computer programs. Slow as hell. The other method which came sometime later is somewhat genius. With satellites constantly creating imagery of the entire Earth, if you combine all of these images of the buildings from different angles, you can create algorithms that start to subsume the real dimensions of the buildings based on all the positions and relationships of the material details on the buildings in all the different imagery, building up to height maps and rough aggregate models. Unfortunately, even though satellites have the greatest cameras in the world, being 1,500 freaking miles in the air, you can only get so many pixels out of a small building. Meaning 3D models built with this imagery are going to have a limited quality cap that they'll never be able to surpass with all the atmosphere in the way from the satellite to the building. But Google started doing something amazing. Since Street View is too immersed and has no perspective, but satellites are too high, the logical conclusion is to split the difference. Introducing Google Planes. Google started doing this soon after 2010, in which they launch planes that take a lawnmower type scan of areas and get much clearer and more detailed imagery at 45 degree angles. They then take that created imagery and are able to create depth maps of the terrain resulting in very accurate 3D building models, and even somewhat accurate trees and bushes. 
They used photogrammetry and computer vision to identify where features of the buildings were from all the different perspectives. They used GPS tracking from the satellites to determine where exactly the camera was pointing at and what area it applies to. They use all these systems that interface into a final result that can determine exactly how far away each surface and detail was from the camera in order to create a fully realized 3D depth map. Since then, Progress on 3D data has absolutely surged in the last 10 years. Reliable 3D data is available all over the place in places like the United States, Canada, Europe, there's lots of 3D in South America, just all over the place. But there's still just as many places where it's not. Russia, China, Africa, and the Middle East, even big places like India lack 3D in most locations, making building take 10 times as long because in addition to Minecraft builder, geologist, and architect, you're also putting on the hats of investigator and historian to put the clues together. That's what it takes, short of going there yourself. But we're not screwed forever. And it's not even for a long time. I couldn't find any known percentage of how much of this quality 3D covers in regards to all of human civilization, but it is substantial substantial progress in 10 years. I wouldn't be surprised if we had most places by definition in another 10 years. But a big problem is the governments of certain countries refusing to let Google in. Will we ever see 3D models and Street View in North Korea and Antarctica, my two favorite places in the world? Probably not. But very often now, zooming in on Africa just gives you really obscure satellite terrain wrapped around low quality height data. Imagine zooming in and you have 3D models of every city, every village, even the savannas and all the nature that the continent has to offer. That moment is coming for us. We just have to wait. And once it does, we can build Africa too. Google is going insane. They even have a Street View Trekker program where they send their employees out to explore Earth. You can see they sent this guy out to a mountain pass with a huge camera mount on his back. I've been suggesting we do this for years and build the Earth as a joke, but Google's actually doing it. It won't be long till they're sending people to the bottom of the ocean or the center of the Earth. It's amazing to consider that the tech economy is in an arms race to recreate the globe in virtual space. And it's even weirder to consider that one of the groups in that field is a Minecraft project. But while the world is in the palm of your hand in terms of exploration with things like Google Earth or even the unique experience exploring it in Minecraft can provide, the most intense experiences you can have in your lifelong relationship with this world will be with your eyes with your ears. The ephemeral feeling of spookiness and dread when visiting a dangerous abandoned area in solitude. The accomplishment, wonder and awe you experience when climbing a mountain. The singular moment of intensity of being on stage with a drunk crowd of hundreds in a raucous bar shooting their intense energy directly at you, all condensed into bright cores of intense feelings permanently burning themselves into your memory system impacting who you are, defining your life story. Those experiences won't come by on your computer. So turn off Minecraft, turn off YouTube for the day, and go outside. You'll be thankful that you did. Honors and homage are due to our top tier supporters, Cristiano Frazanetti, Jonathan Finelli, Matthew Scarberry, Thibault Tallet, and EPRB. You guys are my insides and outsides. Just trust me.